Um, I was praying about this class, and I thought I had more time, you know, um, and I didn't realize the, cl the classes are shorter. Um, for Thank you for the equip class. Um, but I was praying, and the Lord was showing me. Um, I, I literally heard him tell me that he was, he was telling me this. He said, you don't know how hard the struggle is for people to let me love them. That's what he was telling me. And so I, you know, I was like, okay, well, do I let you love me? You know, <laughs> I'm like, you know, what areas, you know, in my life do I not allow you to love me? You know, and so I'm on this journey with him now, you know, asking that question. I really want to know, you know, if he said that, that, and, and uh, he began to tell me, you know, that uh, uh, what has hit the earth, the intimidation through all these things and, and people, if they didn't have a solid foundation, they didn't understand the times. And thank God, uh, Pastor Ken and Pastor Chris are teaching on understanding the times. Uh, and we have to uh, allow ourselves to break free, to uh, allow ourselves to be loved and to give love, right? To receive love from God and to give love to others. And sometimes, you know, even in our culture now, because of the pandemic, you know, we're not sure if we're supposed to, we're supposed to show, shake someone's hand or not, or we're not sure to hug somebody. It's not as bad now, but um, we've we've now feel like we are. We now feel like we are uh, inconveniencing somebody. Like I don't want to inconvenience you. You know, I don't. You know, we have like walls up that we don't even know that we have built. And those walls, you know, have even affected our relationship with God. And uh, so uh, I got um, the, the sheet for you, the spirit and the fruit from the nine, the books that um, I shared with you last uh, couple weeks ago from Robert Strand. Um, and this, this, is a, this is a set of nine books and they're devotionals uh, for you to do on the fruit of the spirit. Uh, so we're going to go through these real quick, and then we're going to uh, talk about the gifts. Uh, I, I have this uh, as a tree. The green didn't really show out that good, but as a tree, right, that we, we get the foundation of Christ. I heard this today, and I thought, wow. Um, this man of God was saying the Bible is, uh, how did he say it? He said it so eloquently, but... Um, we, have, we should be um, embodying the Bible, that we should be embodying it, you know. It's not, and um, he didn't say this, I'm going to say this, that sometimes the, the Bible is like a rabbit's foot for us. Like, oh, he said he'll heal us. Oh, he said he'll deliver me. Oh, and, and we use it as more of a rabbit's foot, like a good luck charm even, per se. And we don't have, really understand the relationship, how much he loves us that he gave his only begotten son. Think about that. that that's a hard, right? So that we could have life and that more abundantly, right? And so, uh, so uh, years ago, about 10 years ago, the Lord showed me that people are still at the cross and they're not at the table. Wow. That we're still at the cross and not at the table. We're still trying to get forgiven of our sins. We're still you know, trying to win his love for us when he already demonstrated his love, but we have to learn how to, what it is to receive God's love. Um, and, and it's not like man's love. And a lot of times we equate God as a father uh, through our experiences with the father. And that is not true, right? That's not right. The kind of love he loves. So number one is love. It's God's fruit of love, which gives itself away with the pure motive and most generously, right? To give ourselves away, right? To to be able, whatever talents and gift things, and you know, whatever healing you got, whatever deliverance you got, whatever revelation you got, you get it so you can give it to someone else. Okay, it's not like I'm good now. I'm good. No, it it's gonna. It's just like. It's like, it's like a, you know, the fruit is just there's going to rot, right? You got to replant it in somebody else, right? You have to replant it in somebody else, right? Uh, so we have to 
And we are in critical times that we got to get that God loves us and he is going to use us to turn the tide, right? Uh, he needs someone to say restore. But if we look at all these things and, and begin to be negative and say uh, things are never going to change or, oh, it's so bad out there, you are, you are agreeing with the false prophets, right? But when we begin to say that God said restore, right? God came to restore. We haven't passed that time yet. We're still in that time, that dispensation of grace, right? And uh, so we have to have mercy and grace and say restore, right? We can see all the, e I mean, oh my God, all the evilness out there, the dimensions of evilness. I understand it can blind us. We want, we want to say, kill them, you know, get them out of here. But they're demons and we have to, be able to recognize that there are demonic forces advancing, right? But the word of God says love never fails, right? So, but if we are in a, a fearful mentality, if we are uh, not sure of God's love for us, then we're not going to be mobilized and we don't really care about the gifts of the spirit. We care when we need it, but how about if someone else needs it? Do we care enough to open our mouth? Do we care enough to say, even if I'm stammering, I'm going to pray for somebody, even if I stutter or whatnot, you know? I'm, I, I'm a sign no wonder because I, I didn't know Spanish. And the first uh, time my pastor sent me to preach, he, sa he sent me to, to do it in Spanish. So I had to look up words and all that kind of stuff. I thought, well, if he asked me to, I'm going, I'm going under his name. So he's, he must think I could do it. So let me try and do this. And I stammered, right? But people got blessed. People got, got uh, healed and restored and all those things. But if I lean on my own understanding, I'll say, no, I don't know how to talk Spanish. I'm not going to do that, you know? And so um, this is where the fruits of the spirit come in. Do we love enough to go outside of ourselves, to give ourselves away, <clears throat> even though people have hurt us, right? Leaders, bosses, parents, loved ones, even though they have, can we still love? Can we allow ourselves to be healed and let that go and let God take care of those things? Okay. So again, Love, God's fruit of love, which gives itself away with a pure motive and most generously, right? Second one is joy, cheerfulness, calm delight, gladness multiplied greatly to be exceedingly full of joy. Um, I, I was seeing the story of the guy that won the Kentucky Derby. And um, it was like it had to be by a photo because it was so close, you know. And the guy said, I knew he was going to win. The jockey said, because he's calm. He never kicks. He never bites. When he's trained, he's calm, very calm. And he said, I knew that his calmness was going to, it, it, that's the energy he won with. Because he, he was calm. And when you're, you know, excited and want to win, you're already uh, using up energy. You know, yeah. but when you're calm, you know, you have, you have more energy when you're calm. How many kids I get when I'm like that, I'm so tired at the end of the night, I'm exhausted. Right. But when I'm, you know, calm and joyful and that I can go, I can go at it. I can stay up late and get up early and all that. But when I'm tense, when I'm, you know, I've let the day take me instead of me taking the day, I feel so tired. My body feels tired, you know? So, um, and also peace, peace is prosperity, quietness, rest, or to be set at one with yourself again. Do you know that we have to center ourselves? The other day, when I was ministering to somebody, the Lord gave me a prophetic word for them about God said, I, I want, I want to center you. Like I never had said that before. And then um, someone, she, she showed me a card or something that somebody said, I can't remember what it was. And it said the same word. The Lord said, I'm centering you. I was, whoa, that's a confirmation, right? And that means to come back to yourself again, come back to yourself, 
not, you know, let everything, you know, have peace. You know, don't let anything take your peace. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. I mean, the world without Jesus is learning some things, right? When we got it free, right? We have access to God. They they can only depend on the natural, but we depend on God's supernatural, right? And so that's why we can truly have peace. We don't have to sit there and go, um, um, right? <laughs> we can just have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, right? That's the fruit of the Spirit. What does that mean? The Spirit is in us. We are giving way. We are yielding to the Spirit of God, right? And we're allowing the Spirit of God to center us, and that means to to put us in, 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 in center connection with God, right? So this is not talking about uh, like natural joy. You know, it's not talking about natural peace when we think everything's okay, right? We're talking about the supernatural peace of God. The confidence has to come back to the church. We have to be confident in God, right? Uh, okay, kindness means useful moral excellence of character or demeanor gracious gentle or goodness okay kindness useful moral excellence of character did you did you think about kindness like that that when people see you kind they see you excellent in character okay? that you don't react a certain way right uh or your demeanor your gracious, gentle, and good and goodness comes from you. The second one is goodness. It describes that which a person being good in character or constitution will be beneficial to others, right? That what someone has, they're, they're, a, they're, they're willing to give it, right? They're, they're willing for other people to benefit, you know? Um, it is it's something that, you know, now that um, I'm... Uh, uh, trying to find programs or letting the Lord lead me to places to find programs for the Dream Center. And, you know, I, I am enjoying it because I'm seeing how much people do care. There are Christians out there that really want to help, you know, people that, um, you know, give their time, give their finances, give their talents without getting paid. You know, that they, these are, I mean, volunteer is the word right now in the city. In, in the nation, people are looking for people to volunteer. And I want you to know, when you volunteer without pay, God repays you. God's going to pay you. He's going to bl bless you and your household. See? And uh, we can't hold back what's in the inside. We can complain all we want, but if we're not connected to, to the foundation of who God is, right, we need that foundation so that, and we need to let God, uh, you know, um, be good to us too. Have you, have, has God been good to you uh, when you thought you least deserved it? I, I'll never forget when I was, uh, um, after I had uh, gotten divorced, um, I had went to church. I hadn't gone to church for a long time. They actually they told me not to come because they were scared of my ex-husband, <laughs> but um uh, I just walked in the church, you know, there, and uh, of course I had a attitude, you know, <laughs> I had an attitude going in there, but I knew nothing ever kept me from the house of God, no matter what brokenness, no matter what I was doing in my life, I always wanted to go to church. So I went and uh, I sat in the back and everybody turns around and looks, you know, you know, it's her, you know, back then divorce was really taboo then, you know, and so... Um, they had a special speaker that day. And all of a sudden, he said, you way back there doing one of these, right? Come up here. And she began to minister to me in my brokenness and began to tell me. And I didn't know about the prophetic prophecy, nothing. And she said, "You, God's going to use you in such a great way that you, you're going to, uh, I see you prophesying to thousands. You know, I see you, you know, uh, I'm like, I don't even know what that is, but okay, you know, this feels good. And it brought me to repentance. It brought me to repentance because I was not living good. I was so broken and so hurt. You know, I just uh, was going back to old 
thinkings and everything like that. But that day when I went into church, and I went in there sassy, I'm not going to lie, I went in there sassy, and uh, the lady calls me, and everybody's like, like, what is, it, what is, what is she going to say to her, you know, like that? And here she speaks this word, and his goodness, what, what, his goodness drew me. His goodness to me in front of all the religious judges and critics that he would say, you're my daughter. You're going, I have this and I've called you to do that and all those things when I didn't think much of myself, but it was his goodness. That's the kind of goodness that God has towards us. Well, it's easy to be good to somebody that's good to you, right? It's not easy to be good to someone that's not good to you. And I'm telling you, uh, in, when I was working out there, God always, I was always positioned with a mean boss. But before I left that job, their hearts were turned to Jesus, right? Because I would not react like other people react, you know, and, and I would just let the Lord, don't, um, don't get me wrong. I did talk under my breath sometimes, but, you know, so uh, this is the kind of goodness that God has, you know, and then guess what? After she prophesied to me, at the, at the end of her preaching, she calls, she calls for an altar call. I was the first one going up there. Right, because if he wasn't ashamed of me to call me to the front, right, and, and say, This is my daughter, you know, you know, I said, I'm not ashamed. I'm going up there to the altar. See, that's the kind of goodness that we have to be an example of, right? Not always bitter and angry and, and upset of what happened before. You are a new creation. You're not living off the tree of good and evil no more. You're you're living off the tree of life. You are called to be a life giver now, right? So faithfulness is to be trusted, reliable, believing, to be counted on at all times of a firm persuasion, right? To be faithful. Gentleness is mild, meek, to be an inwrought grace of the soul. Gentleness, mild and meek. Nowadays, it's just horrible that you know people are just talking against churches uh there is a there was a video clip that went viral that this pastor the whole, you know they were praying it was a holy spirit kind of conference and you could feel the presence of god in the video and he was and then this one lady started screaming right real loud in the midst when the holy spirit was moving and he said hush he just said hush to her but she just got more loud and he said, silent, like that. And so it went viral how this man was supposed to be a man of God. Why did he do that? And all those things. Then he was on a talk show, that pastor, and said that for four years, they've been trying to talk to this lady. Don't do that when the spirit of God is moving. And they prayed for her for four years. They've been dealing with this. you know. But I, I think soon that churches are not going to show their church services anymore online. Because they, people pick things out of there. There's demonic spirits that are trying to destroy the church, and we can't be a part of it. We cannot be a part of it. We have to know that God is God. He didn't call any Holy Spirit juniors on the earth, right? There's only one Holy Spirit, right? And he leads us. He, he, leads, he wants us to allow him to lead our soul into healing, lead our soul into deliverance. Right, and then when our soul goes, then our body's gonna come into alignment with our soul. Right, the last one uh, is self control, dominion, power, strength. Isn't that something? Would you think of that word self control to be dominion? But when you can, when you're self controlled, you have taken dominion. That is so powerful. That's so powerful. Uh, having a having great force, but under control. So self-control doesn't mean that you don't have power. You just you just you just have it. You you know how to govern what you have, right? Uh, it's not to water you down. You know, sometimes we get words and we um, they, those words lock us down instead of growing us up. So these are the fruit of the spirit, and these these are being cultivated in our life with every trial with every situation, 
it is cultivated in our life. Um, I, I've said stories about this before. When, when I was uh, with my children in Michigan, uh, being a single parent, um, anything would happen, I would freak out. Like, like the whole world will end. If my car broke, it was, oh my God, we're done for. How am I going to get to work? You know, it seems so impossible. But guess what? God always came through, right? He always came through. So all the time that he kept coming through, my faith started growing, right? My faith started growing. And, and see, and that's one thing that we, we, we think as Christians that nothing is going to happen to us. No, we have the power to turn it around. In Jesus, hello. We have the power to to uh, to take authority uh, number one for ourselves, and then listen for God. And sometimes we don't listen to God, right? And um, and so uh, every trial or situation we go through uh, should mature us, right? It should mature us uh, in these that we begin to start having peace in situations. Right, I've got I've gotten where I've had zero in my account, and all of a sudden somebody was would knock on my door and bring food for my kids, uh, all kinds of laundry soaps, dish soap, shampoo, and I didn't have a phone or car. You know, but I said, God, you know, you, I, there's nothing I can do. I I give it to you. I have so many miracle moments that I've had. You know, when I had them. When I didn't have nobody, I had those miracle moments. I, my family, I hadn't talked to them. Uh, they hadn't talked to me for seven years. Uh, for those seven years, it was a faith walk for those whole seven years. I was raising four kids at eight fifty an hour, with four kids, and uh, but it was a faith walk all that time, and I felt closest to God in those times. Because you're totally relying on him, right? You're totally relying on him. And I see he, he, that he is my peace, right? I see he taught me patience, right? I see that he has been kind to me, that he's good to me. He's faithful to me. He's gentle with me, right? And I know he's self-control with me because <laughs> I'm still alive, right? So... These are uh, so important. Um, you know, the, the gifts are amazing, but if we don't have this right, it's of non-effect. It's not, it's not, the other person may, may uh, um, hear God in the, in the gifts or be healed by the gifts, but it's not effect with me. I'm not, I'm not growing. I'm not being able to um, partake of these things, right? So I'd rather have these things that have all of these, right? But you know what? All of these will motivate you to do this, right? It should, it should motivate you to, to, um, to have a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, to be able to discern the spirits, uh, to have the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of tongues or interpretation of tongues. The gift of tongues is for you to edify your spirit, man, right? So we should desire that interpretations in the corporate so people know what God is saying and the gift of prophecy which is you know knowing the heart and mind of God and and releasing edification exhortation and comfort and then the working of miracles right uh, these are all at our disposal but it's going to be so much easier when we are working on the fruit of the uh, of these things my mother was a yeller. She yelled. I mean, I'd rather have her spank me than yell at me because that's how hard she would yell at me. But um, when my, my oldest son, he was a little, and I yelled at him, he, when he looked at me like he saw a monster. I ran to my room, and I fell on my knees. I said, God, I don't want to yell at my child like my mother yelled at me. Help me to do that. So it was a process. God worked in my heart. And um, my, my kids have seen a transformed mom. <laughs> they, have, they have stories too. So, <laughs> yeah. So today, I'm going to pass out this card to each and every one of us. You have to stay in the room, okay? You cannot leave my class right now because <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do this. But I want you to write 
three things about yourself on the left side and then on the right side, any, any need you might have, any prayer requests you might have. So on the left, I want you to write three things about yourself. And on the other side, I want you to write something that you would like prayer for. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything. If you want to tell us the bad stuff, go ahead. Whatever. Whatever. This is not a condemnation. Or... Okay. Yes. When you said that self-control was candidate for the other people, I thought like God said to you earlier, you have to be able to receive the Father's love. Yeah. To be able to have that self-control. Yeah. Because otherwise you don't Yes. And also, a great robber of self-control is anxiety. Yes. Because it robs you of thinking that you don't have control. Amen. And um, we know who we can give the control to, right? Yes, the Holy Spirit. And, and that's the whole thing. These, these, This is our inheritance. This is our inheritance right here. God gave us a life in the Spirit. So this is part of our inheritance, you know, that we, these are gifts that God gave us. He left the, left, the, left, the, uh, left us these gifts. I speak in Spanish in the morning. I have decrees and my tongue uh, is in Spanish right now. So I'm going to tell English, please. Okay. So, so these are our spiritual inheritance and are they moving in the church? Are they moving in our life? And it doesn't have to be at the altar. It could be in a conversation with somebody. When you love somebody, when you love, uh, I'll tell you, I, I worked at this company and the, and the company, we only had like five desks there. It was a small company. And uh, I, I, I got uh, 12.50 an hour there. So that was a little, but I still needed more finances. So I told my boss, you know, I need more finances. So I applied for a job and I'm gonna have an interview today. He said, okay. And so I went on the interview because I was very honest, you know, I went on the interview and they hired me. So I came back and told him that I was giving my two weeks and he told the president. So the president said, I want to do an exit interview with you. I said, okay, I, I love them. I mean, they gave me a job when I didn't even have the skill and I really grew to, to, to love the people that were in the, in the, in the company. So the president took me out to eat and um, he starts asking me all the things that I see all kinds of word of wisdom, word of knowledge came. He was just writing that down, writing that down. And too bad this is the last class I would I could bring the letter that he wrote that day. He said, if you stay, I'll give you a $9,000 raise and I'll pay off your car. Like that. And I said, okay. <laughs> and he said, you want me to write it right now? Yes. He got his paper out and he wrote the contract by hand, you know, of, of that. But so, so then the company began to grow so big that um, it had a warehouse, trucking company, all these things. And he got it so big that now he just wanted to sell it because he was a retired man. But my boss, um, uh, he was like a father's son to him, you know. And so my boss was upset because the president would not sell the company to him. I could have not said nothing, but the Lord told me to tell him the reason why he doesn't want to sell you the company is because he loves you. He doesn't want you to lose your life. You're you're, you're young. I think it was like 35. You're young and he wants you to get married and have a family. I it, That was like, who am I? A child of God. So God wanted me to say that. So I said it to him. And guess, I said, you know what? He's going to give you a portion of the sale of the company. But he won't let you buy it because he doesn't want you to destroy your life. And so, because he, he had experienced a divorce and whatnot. So sure enough, it happened. The boss gave him a portion of the sale of the company. You see what I'm saying? This is the kind of things we should move in every day of our life. But if you don't even know God loves you, if you're still worried, if you're still in fear, not faith, right? If you're still angry and not in gentleness or self-control, if you want it now and you're not patient to wait for that time to come, you see, we can say we love God, but do we love who what he stands for? 
his plan for our lives, right? You know, it's easy to love somebody that's misfortunate. You can love somebody that's misfortunate because they're misfortunate, right? Your heart, you'll hear a story, oh, you're oozing, right? But how about this heart, this heart hydrant man, right? My boss, how about that? See? And so sometimes we can be manipulated by our emotions because we feel, oh, poor thing or whatever. And we need to be led by the spirit of God to not just feel sorry for somebody and give them, you know, what they need, whatever it is, uh, clothes or whatever. But we don't give them, you know, uh, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a prophetic word. Pray for a miracle that they just don't get the clothes they have now, but God begin to bless them and open doors for them. You see what I'm saying? So some people, they can give, but we got more to give than money. What, what, are the, what do the two um, apostles say at the gate beautiful? Silver and gold, I have none, but what I have, I give to you. All right? Um, so are you guys writing? <laughs> Yours up? Yeah, give it. Do you have a name on it? No. <laughs> huh? Oh, thank you. I had a luncheon today, that's why. Yes. We had extra. Okay. Maybe you needed two. <laughs> when you're done, that. Huh? Oh. There you go. Just let me know when you're done. Mm -hmm. I have a piece of water. No, I'm not using it. Myers. That kind of stuff I get at Myers. It's always fresh. Mm-hmm. Ready? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. If you find one you can't read, that's the problem. <laughs> What's hard? Good. <laughs> this is, and, and you know, that's a good thing because you know what you're doing? You're, you centered yourself. You centered yourself. So you had to think three things about me, you know, and then, you know, what do, what do I need prayer for? You know, we all need prayer for something. Thank you. <laughs> And that's a good example about centering ourselves, you know. Anybody have a song they want to sing right now? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jesus loves me. <laughs> yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Aww. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Jesus. Oh, now she's doing it in sign language. <laughs> Look at all this talent in here. Sign language. 
Lo veo poquito. Oh, español también. ¿Era? We put on there. You can put that on there. I don't know what to say. Okay. Okay, Susie, go ahead. I agree. What I'm saying about uh, when you're walking in the group in love, as you say, in love, and Jesus walks in love, that, those gifts will pour out of you. Yeah. Like it did, he raised Lazarus, who's got an instrument, because of that love came out of him. And it would just go and do the, the gifts, no matter, it doesn't have to be a certain gift. When you're walking up, what yeah. you need at that time is going to come out. You don't even think about it. No. You, you don't even think work. about it. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, it's just like the other day we were at the campus and someone was sharing with us about a diagnosis they got. And I had, I said, oh, really? And I was just, oh, I don't, I, you know, I, I was just saying, talking. And then all of a sudden, when the Lord said, oh, hello, go pray for her. Oh, yeah. So I went, but it just wasn't, I'm thinking about it, the other things I have to do. And, uh, but he reminded me. He said, go, go pray for her. And then I let, I, I let it out good because I'm like, oh, you, you know, and I let myself flow, you know. Everybody? A couple more. Yeah, I you were, you were oh, you thought, yeah, you thought it was. <laughs> oh, you know what I should do? Now? You don't want to say overtime on your last day of class, do you? <laughs> Okay, so this is what we're going to do now. <laughs> I'm going to give each of you a card. Uh, if it's yours, give it back to me. So let me pass them out first. Is that yours? Is that yours? <laughs> Who turned this? Susie. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been oh <laughs> is that yours okay yours oh what is this because oh okay a lot of us got doubles. Oh, yeah, I think it might be you. <laughs> Make sure this is one. <laughs> is that yours? No. Is 
that you? No. Okay. <laughs> Where are all these black ones come from? Is this here? I can read this one. It's weird. Where the... Did somebody give me a blank? My husband had some postcards that were taken by people who were blind. And it's like, it was written in cursive. Oh. You can just barely, barely read it. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, well, things haven't changed quite. <laughs> did, er did everybody get one? Did everybody get one? Okay. All right. I'm going to start. I'm going to start off, okay? Class. <laughs> I'm going to start off, okay? Because I put my name in there, too. Um, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to say... Uh, the, the three things of the person, and then I'm going to uh, read the prayer, and then you're, you're going to pray for them, and then after you're done praying for them, we're going to say who was this person. Okay, so you're not going to know that. You're, all you know is this. What happened? <laughs> well, we know you. Who is? I got you now. Okay. No, listen, I'm going to read, I'm going to do the example. I'm going to read the three things about them, the person. And then I'm going to read the prayer that they need prayer for. I'm going to pray for the person. Then after I'm praying, I'm going to say, who was this person? Oh, okay. So you're not going to know who it is. Yep. You understand? Can we say, can huh? we say who's us? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, after, after I pray or after you pray, then I, I'll say, who was, who, whose card was this? Okay. You got it? Uh -huh. so she looks a little confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. so, okay. Uh, this person, I continue to find myself repeating the same mistakes. I want, to f I want to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I am judgmental and sarcastic. That, okay. And then the prayer is, I struggle with self-control very often. Find myself yelling at my kids. I want prayer for that. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, Lord God. I thank you that this class has been designed for, for this person, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that you have this person here for such a time as this, Lord God. And I, I hear the Lord say you've been obedient even though you don't think you are obedient. You came uh, reluctantly. You came not knowing I drew you by my spirit, uh, says the Lord. And this is a time I, it, this, is, this didn't happen overnight, so it's not going to change overnight. The Lord says, you're noticing it now. You, you admit it now. You didn't admit it before. And you felt like it was just who you are. But I hear the Lord say, you are a new creation and a holy, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. And, I'm, and that's what I'm forming in the inside of you. So I hear the Lord say, keep coming, keep going, uh, even when you don't feel like it, because you are fighting a battle that you're going to win, and you're going to win it in front of your children. They're going to notice the change. They're going to notice every little thing uh, that you do. They're going to notice, wow, I see some changes happening in that. They, they probably won't tell you, but they're, they're going to notice, and they're noticing uh, something different about you. So I hear the Lord say to you, be at peace. I give you my peace. I give you my peace. I give you my patience, the patience that I've, I'm having with you, you're going to be able to give. So know that you're already in the works. It's already in the works, says the Lord. Father, I thank you. I bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah. I also heard the Lord say to keep pursuing me. I have set you in a place where you will know who I am. You do not have to do this by yourself. Trust me and know me because I am your father. He just keeps showing me that you are to pursue him. And that would be like pursuing like a new job or pursuing um, 
things that you have added into your life, he has said that you have put intention behind it. And that's the intention and pursuit that I want you to put in pursuing me. Because you do not have to do this by yourself. I'm, I'm getting more, but I'm going to stop because we're going to go through. Who, who's, whose person was that? That's you. That's him. Okay. Pat, go ahead. Who's your person? Okay. Say it loud so we can hear. I love to draw. I love to sew. Their prayer requests are need a summer job. I would like a home and healing. Okay, Frank. Okay. Well, Lord, we just thank you for this individual that you have given the gifts of drawing and creativity. You have shown them how to sew and put patterns together. Father God, right now, you see their needs. You see that they need a job. They want a home, and they want healing. And these are things that you have given and promised them. Mm -hmm. These are basic needs that you have said, as the Father, I will stand with you and give you these things. So, Lord, we call in the home. We ask that it be according to your will, place them in the city they need to be in and in the neighborhood. And you will surround them with like people to encourage them. Father God, we call in the healing yes, that Lord. you promised and you have said that healing is yours. Give them the faith to understand that it is according to your will. Your will has already been accomplished in the heavens. We ask that you bring it to the foundation. We ask that you bring it to the earth and that their destiny is fulfilled. And a summer job, that the doors will be open and the yes. finances will be increased and the weight will be lifted off of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who was that? Raise your hand. A little higher. Raise your hand high. There you go. There you go. Go ahead. I am a twin. I love Jesus. I modeled when I was younger. Prayer requests. I feel deeper intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And to let God love me. Yes. Amen. That was me. <laughs> I know you can give time to say she. That was the Lord. <laughs> Go ahead, Sally. violin only, but mm -hmm. I love the pipes, organ, and drum. Mm -hmm. Astronomy is awesome. Yeah. Um, work on bad habits of lateness and, and going to bed late. Guidance, conviction on whether to go on a missions trip to Japan with husband. I want a better attitude, I think. Mm -hmm. Wisdom on raising my son. Mm -hmm. um, Lord, I pray for this person. Um, this to this person, it probably sounds like a tall order, Lord. 
but we know that you can do all things. Yes, yes. And that we ask that um, you remind her, Lord, that to go to bed when she should. Yes. And um, also to give her um, the answer, Lord, of whether to go on this mission trip or not. Yes. And um, the, also the wisdom that she needs to raise her son, Lord, that she raises him according to your will, Lord, and not hers. Yes. Amen. Amen. Who is this? Yes. I, I feel to lay my hands on you um, for the maternal anointing, a mothering anointing to come on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, Lord, I lay my hands on her, Father God, and I release the mothering anointing over her, Father God. Lord, that overthinking and the drivenness that she was raised in she will not raise her son that way lord i pray right now lord that that maternal instinct be activated in the inside of her father that you show her new things new ways lord god that lord your mothering spirit would be upon her father god i thank you it will not be hard she will not feel like it's hard Lord, it'll, it'll become smooth, smooth as, butter, as butter, Lord God. Smooth as butter, Father. So I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, just a release over from the top of her head, just soles of her feet. Let her feel the mother's love right now. Let her feel the love of a mother right now, Lord God. Let her feel that love, Lord God. Let her feel, Lord, the, the voice of the mother say, I'm so proud of you, daughter. I'm so proud of who you are. I'm so blessed by you. You are a blessing. You were a blessing to the family. You're a blessing to the family. I release right now, Lord God, that she would feel that warmth of the mother's love, Lord God. Let her feel that warmth. Let those walls come down, Lord God, and let her feel that love of a mother so she can pour it into her son. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, next. Who's next? Oh, Susie. Mm -hmm. um, I am an encourager. I am influenced. I am an influence for the good. I struggle with anxiety sometimes. And then the change of it, the spiritual gift continues to grow in me. Father God, I just lift her up to you, Lord. And I thank you for this person, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that we can cast all your our cares on you and you care for us. Yes. You care about every little piece of us. I thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you that she would just roll them over onto you. Every little tiny little thing is a big one. Father God, that you would just show her how much she is loved by you. That the fathering of um, that you would just show the Father's love upon her, Lord. And Lord, that I just see this tree just expanding. Mm. The vine is just growing towards you. Of that spiritual growth of moving. And the fruit of it just, there's so much of it that it's just on mm. everywhere. Mm. So I thank you, Lord, that for that. I thank you that the desire of her heart was the Holy Spirit. Uh, you just help her, Lord. You are her encourager. You are a helper, Lord. So I pray that you just continue to show your gifts, Lord, to help her grow in that in Jesus' name. Amen. And just uh, pray for more time with you. That in that place of um, that she would just pray more of you and that relationship grows more and deeper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Back to raise your hand high. Oh, no. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Receive the prayers when they're praying for you. This person says they are a Christian um, in a relationship, family, children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. They want to know God and hear from Him. Help them know Him more. Prayer time that says healing, physically, emotional, and mind. Know what to do with the words that come out. Wisdom to keep the time and discernment. Uh, pray for Stephanie and healing. Also, um, yep. 
Yes, Lord. Lord. So much. You, I've never, it says in your word that I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And there's Amen. Bread. Amen. I thank you for your, for this, this person's provider. I thank you, Lord. You give this person hope. I thank you, Lord. The gospel is preached to the poor. The sight comes to the blind. Thank you, Lord. The gospel is a solution for any kind of poverty that's yes. out there. Yes. I thank you. Yes. This person has your word, your promises. Yes. That, hallelujah. Yes. You yes. have a, you make a way where there is no way. I thank you, Jesus, that this 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 job that is in the fall. I'm not sure if this person means that they are looking for a job this fall, or if they already have one lined up. But I yes. thank you, Lord, that no matter what the situation is here, I thank you, Jesus, that they, you provide. For yes. Them. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. They have your health that you that they can enjoy the things that you want them to enjoy, just even a sunset or, or a sunrise, whichever one they like to see more. Yes. Thank you, Lord, so much. You give them joy yes. and, and peace that it, you know, that it's their strength. I thank you, Lord, that that works in their bodies. Thank you, Jesus. You help them to walk in your divine health. Yes, Lord. So they can be a blessing to the people that they work with at that new job. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That when they walk into the room, they know that they are something different about them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Who's that? Sally? Sunset. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. That's awesome. See? You didn't even know you're. Right. See, you're flowing. You're flowing in that. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Quiet. <laughs> Amen. Good job. Go ahead. Okay. 
You can pray. Amen. Amen. Who was that? <laughs> All right. Good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, they love to read. They're adventurous and they enjoy decorating. Um, prayer for direction. Um, pour out of the Father's love. And then new vehicle for husband. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, I just pray for this person. I, um, I thank you for um, their adventurous spirit and um, their love to read and reading your word. And I just ask that um, you give them your, uh, your direction and which way they need to go with whatever situation. Point them to you to keep your eyes focused on you and point them to your word to help with the direction. And I just ask that you pour out your love, your agape love on them, that they will um, know that no matter what, that you will always be there, will always cherish, will always love, will always guide. Yes. Um, I just ask um, for help with the car situation, if it's in your will, and to um, help with any other finances to line up so that it could be possible. I thank you for this person. Please continue them to give them an adventurous spirit. Yes. Um, their love for decorating to bring joy to people's lives. And, yes. Um, their love of reading and continue to search your word for everything for this life. Yes. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Who, who was that? Susie. Hi. All right. Sir? All right. I'm going to struggle with the not bring my reading glasses. Okay. Bear with me. Three things. God talks to me in stories because I love stories. Wow. Yeah. Uh, my parents named me Joy. My mom called me My Joy. Uh, my third oh, sorry. name is pronounced as My Joy, which is prophetic, which is for most people of joy. Uh, <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. All right, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for her to give us the three things about herself that we learned about today, and that she wants to grow in self control. And one who is always praying for self control, I pray. And her desire to grow in that. So I ask that you bless her with the ability to take a step back sometimes, breathe in what's going on, and slowly breathe out that self control to even laugh sometimes at what's going on in the moment. So yes. The reaction that comes from her is more of love and caring and goodness. And, and just let that joy mm -hmm. celebrate the times when she does exercise self control so that she can gain these little victories over her self control and um, controlling her emotions. And, and every time that she sees that she can exercise that self control, 
you can add to the virtual idea and you just say, you know what, I can do that, I'm good at that, and your whole thing is fear fills me with the ability to control myself. So this wheel of self-control just keeps you grow and, and guide her in that journey, Lord. We know that you have the power to fill her, uh, to guide her, and to help her with her journey. So we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Who's that? All right. That was really good. You know, <laughs> yes, I felt like for a good prayer for yourself, too. That was that was really good. Self-control with yelling, getting frustrated with my kids. Um, we know strengthen relationship with my daughter. To be bold and strong as a witness for Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so Father God, I just first of all, just yes, she is he or she is a child of yours. So Lord, hallelujah, we thank you for that. Yes. Um, and that she said she's a good listener, and that is an amazing attribute. It's also being a loyal individual. And so, Lord, thank you for both of those things that you placed inside of her or him. <laughs> and, Lord, um, self-control, um, I pray that you just give this person um, a double grace and a double peace mm. right now with that. Yes. Um, as, as they feel frustrated. And I understand for my own self um, that frustration can happen with our children sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I pray, again, for that double grace and that um you just give her the wisdom that she needs and that um, she just sets the tone by just reading your word in the morning and just starting off with prayer and, and just trusting you and that she also, or he, gives themselves um, um, grace in all of that yeah. as we need that um, in that forgiveness. And so uh, I just pray that over that individual that you just um, really help them with that, with that um, through the spirit of self-control. Yes. And then also, um, Lord, I pray for the relationship with our daughter. Lord, that you would mend both hearts and soften those hearts as well towards one another and have an overflowing relationship of joy and um, just happiness and a healthiness yes, uh -huh. that will come about. And that through that, um, just you see the, the, the healthy fruits of it and that other people will see that, that it changes. Mm -hmm. And so we pray for that renewal in that relationship. And then also, Lord, just uh, praying for a boldness and a, and a confidence as, as um, this individual wants to be a witness for you. As, as obviously feels that um, it's the need of where we're at as such a time as this that we're in to be a bold and confident witness for you. Yes, Lord. And so I pray that you just place all of those things inside of this individual and that um, as she prays and or he or she prays that um, the Holy Spirit that she he or she will lead that, that those things will come and just continue to trust and to believe. Yes. And see those things happen. Sometimes we don't know it's we don't lean on our own understanding, but we trust you with all yes. of our Yes, Lord. Lord. As I, as I have said for myself, like, I don't see these things and then other people will say these. Yes. And so I believe that. For this yes. Individual. Yes, God. As, as, if they're asking, yes. Um, continue to see, continue to knock, and continue to believe. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And we'll see those things. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Who was that? Good. All right. Okay. We got one more that's online. And uh, I'm going to ask you to pray for I'm going to read it, and then I want you to pray. I want you to keep moving. Your gift, you. <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, I'm yeah, I, I used it online, so I thought you were looking. Oh at no, the you you don't have to look at her. But I have the I have it on here. Okay. I'm gonna read it out loud, but then you'll pray for her. Okay. okay. It says I. It says Sorry. it's okay. <laughs> I thought you were like me. <laughs> no. It says, I, it says I'm sensitive, compassionate, and I love people. Prayer requests. Uh, because of these characteristics, I'm in need of prayer to love well, 
to love people in any situation that comes my way, to be secure in the Father's love. Oh, sure. That's fine. It's okay. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, to help this person. I thank you, Lord. Just, um, Peggy. Peggy. Thank you, Lord. You help Peggy to love well. And thank you, Lord. You give her supernatural wisdom. Mm hmm wisdom that you and supernatural knowledge on how to love and love people and that's in any situation that comes my way by your holy spirit i thank you jesus i thank you jesus that you give her wisdom thank you lord that things that she does not know they just come to her about how to love these people because Hallelujah, you give her that, she, you put it on her heart to love on someone, I yes. thank you, Lord, you make that happen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. you make that happen, you give her the tools to do it, yes. like, a, like a tool in a toolbox, you tell her which one to take out and apply it with your love, and with your wisdom, and with your knowledge. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, that's so good. Uh, we're going to close our eyes right now. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come in in those areas. I think that's a very key thing that for to let God love us. That's God showed me that, you know, it's it's a struggle to let God love us. So, Father, right now, Holy Spirit, you're in the midst of us. We thank you for Jesus for making it all possible that the Holy Spirit can live in us and be with us at all times. And so right now, Father, we lift our hearts to you, Father God. And Lord, we, we humble ourselves to say, we don't know how to love like you. We, we need to be loved by you. We need to know that we know it by the written word, but let us know it by the spirit now, Lord. Let us know your, your gentleness. Let us know your goodness, Lord God. Let us know... Lord, your, your peace, Lord God, let us know your joy, Lord God, let us know your love, Father. I pray right now, whatever walls that have been there in our lives, Father, that don't let us love, feel loved by you, that don't allow us to go and uh, let you go into those places that need to be loved. We need to be loved. We confess that. We need to be loved, Lord. You created us to be loved. So I pray right now, Father, walls, Lord God, ancient walls, walls that have been there for generations, Lord God, walls of hardness, uh, walls of frustration, Lord God, walls of uh, sarcasm though, that come through the uh, bloodline, Lord God, those walls come down, uh, that those negative words, those fears, those intimidations, Lord God. Lord, I pray that those walls will come down. Let, let our faces be like a beam of light because we're loved by you, Lord God, that there, we're not walking in shame. We're not walking with our head down or without confidence, Lord, because our confidence comes from knowing that you love us, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the mothering spirit, the fathering spirit of God to be upon us, Lord God. I pray, Lord, for the brotherly love to be among us, Father God. I pray for the agape, Lord God, to come upon us, Lord God. I pray today, Lord, as we uh, seal this class today, we seal it with the Holy Spirit, that the class may be over, but the work that you started in us is not. It just began. It just began, and Lord, we come as a living sacrifice, Lord God, that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind, Lord, so we know the height, the depth, the width of you, the length of you, Lord God. So I pray today, Father, as a, that you've been stirring us, Lord God, and even the gifts that manifest today, the, the gift of faith manifested because we prayed for someone we didn't know, 
who it was, Lord God. So, Lord, and I believe, Lord, that the, the working of miracles uh, have, have been uh, set and released upon us, Father, through the prayers of the saints, Lord God, of your children, Father. I thank you for the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge that came forth, the prophecies that came forth, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that these gifts have been in motion in this room, Lord God, the gift of healing, Father God, the word of wisdom, knowledge, and discerning of spirits, Lord God. I thank you that they have been activated in our lives, Father God, and this is how simple it is. This is how simple it is in our everyday life, Lord. Lord, we come to you, Father. We come to you, and we say we need to be loved by you, Lord. Love us. Love us, Lord God. Any wall that, that we've had, Lord God, we yield right now to your love, Father, that we might love others as you have loved us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless everybody. It was a joy to be able to teach. Um, yes. Woo. <laughs> I feel, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit right here. You can allow him to come in right now. You don't have to wait till you drive home or are at home with the Holy Spirit minister to your heart. And sadly, you have a mothering spirit, but the Lord says, I release the mothering over you, the love of a mother over your life. I release that warmth inside of you that you would be loved. You would be loved. You would feel the, mother, the mothering love in your life that you would be able to experiment, not just give it. You give what you didn't get. You give what you didn't receive in your childhood in your lifetime. But the Lord says that you're not too old to be a kid. You're not too old to enjoy what you didn't enjoy when you were younger. The Lord says, and that's why I favor you. And that's why I, 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 um, I give you the things that I give you because I'm restoring your youth. I'm restoring the things that were taken from you from your youth. And I'm healing you deeply. And even the, the love in your marriage has grown. The unity in your marriage has grown. And it's just going to keep growing for your kids, for your adult children. You have mothered them. You have mothered and fathered them. But I hear the Lord say, I'm going to pour that mothering on you. And, and, and it, it will, you, won't be, you won't see narrowly. You'll be able to see more amply the love around you. And boys love different than girls. Boys love different than girls, but you will hear your sons say that they love you. You will hear appreciation from your sons. You're going you're gonna to be able to hear that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I just feel the Lord's really healing some hearts from uh, not receiving the embraces of when you were children, when you were young adults, not always hearing the negative, but you didn't hear the love. You didn't see the love as, as you desired it. But I see God just wrapping his arms around us today, just imparting that love in our hearts. Deposits, I see deposits coming down. Deposits are coming down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As you began to pray the Lord's Supper, first words that came in were unconditional love. Mm. You said to look it up. Unconditional love, simply put, is love without strings attached. Mm. It's love you offer freely. He wants us to understand his love is offered to us freely. 
Then I went further and it says how to show unconditional love. Practice open communication so both of your needs can be met. Communicate in a non-defensive way. Don't let the little annoyances of life override your love. Share power in your relationship and pay attention to how you express your love. He just wants us to understand that unconditionally he loves us and we can return that to our communication, not being defensive, but just simply loving without the weight of our judgment upon us because he does not judge us through his love. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what I, I forget, forget your name. Ellie. Ellie? Yeah, the Lord says to you that uh, you're not going to live on um, pins and needles anymore. You live on pins and needles. And the Lord says, I'm taking that uh, where you've always had to fend for yourself or you've had to protect yourself. Uh, the Lord says, uh, you're, you're, like, you're like a ninja. You're like boom, 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 in and out uh, to protect yourself. You've been in and out of things. But I hear the Lord say, that's not the season you're living now. The Lord, you, the Lord says you are well loved. You you are you are going to learn what it is to be fathered and mothered. You're going to feel my embrace, says the Lord, and you're not going to have to live on pins and needles, uh, and uh, or or worry that reoccurrences of things are going to happen, uh, waiting for the shoe to drop. The Lord says I'm breaking that off of you, and I'm causing you to know that I'm a good good father to you. You see, I'm good to others, but you have not been able to see it for yourself. Uh, but you're, the Lord says you have a lot of wisdom. You know you know that it's best to be in me, even though sometimes you doubt my love for you personally. You see my love for other people, but you doubt my love for you personally. But I hear the Lord say, I'm going to even begin to uh, show you how much I know you and how much I love you, and how I created you, uh, says the Lord. You, you could have almost been like a for, forensic person, uh, someone to uh, see details, and, and, and um, I don't know if you like, uh, like crime movies of, of uh, detective kind of stuff. I, I hear the Lord say that you could have been a, a detective because you can see things, but that is, those are supernatural gifts that I've given you, uh, says the Lord, where you can look right in the eyes of people and know where their heart really is. And you don't waste time with those people, but I'm going to give you a compassion. I'm going to give you a compassion, uh, says the Lord, and I'm, I'm coming for you in this season. I'm coming for your heart. I'm coming for, for your heart to embrace you and love you and care for you, uh, says the Lord. You don't always have to take care of yourself. I want to take care of you. I want to take care of your family. I want to take care of your marriage. I want to take care of your businesses, uh, says the Lord, uh, because that's coming ahead for, for you and your husband as different adventures, uh, says the Lord. And you're going to see that my hand is in it because I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be there every step of the way. I'm going to su support it. I'm going to uh, put the, the, the key dynamics together for it. Uh, says the Lord. This is not a far-fetched dream at all, says the Lord. It is what I place in your heart and what I place in your husband's heart, uh, says the Lord. Don't worry about disappointing people, says the Lord. As I move you and navigate you both, uh, says the Lord, don't worry about who will be disappointed. Uh, you say you don't care, but you really do because you have a very sweet heart, a very sensitive heart, but, but you've had a shield over that uh, and so that's how you protect yourself. Well, it is, it is what it is. I don't care. But I hear the Lord say, I, 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 I created you so wonderfully, says the Lord. And this is your time to feel the embrace of the father and the mother, says the Lord. Amen. 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 Okay. God bless you guys. <laughs> thank you. Now I can go. You Thank you for coming. Now, now uh, I can, uh, I feel released now. I didn't release. <laughs>